Ben. Whoa. Whoa. Which one? Do your best impression of Tyler. Fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. Nice one. <laughs> yes, wait. Games, fun, sex, three words that are all bound to grab your attention on a fine spring morning, afternoon, or indeed, good bloody well evening. For years, I've dreamed again of hosting the Crosscast, torn away from this hot seat by the foul foreign brigand named Lewis, aka that Dr. Twat. Times have changed since I last hosted. People have been banging out monkeys, create monkeypox. And we went through a pandemic after some people banged up a panda. It's a strange time, a scary time, a time where a man with a humble size 36 waist can get fat shamed by someone that looks ostensibly homeless. A man that openly jokes about locking children in his basement. And life hasn't got easier for his gamers since I last hosted. Games are expensive, fizzy drinks have shot up in price, and the advent of OnlyFans has rendered most nerds skint and reliant on shit but affordable services like Game Pass to maintain their hobbies. But I'm back. I'm back to tear you away from the mundane, dull content that you're used to seeing when Ben talks about yet another weeb game. I'm here to guide our flock as Alex attempts to curry favour for putting Tetris in his top 10 games of all time, or as some would say, the corner of video games. I'm here to ensure that this ship doesn't set sail, but that it flies into the night sky, gracefully lighting up the houses of Liverpool, giving comfort to tens of people, but possibly scaring thousands into thinking that there's a police helicopter outside. I'm here. You're here. We're here. And joining me this week, it is the Dapper Rapper with a voice smoother than his own head. It is Ben. Hi, Ben. Hey, I haven't heard that for a very, very long time been a while hasn't it and it is also the bloke with the fashionably tight underpants it's alex hello <laughs> couldn't get out of that with uh without being sexy there and making his cross cast dead butt debut is the man who lives on a made-up island that is a difficult to pronounce second name it's tyler reno renardo renardo renoir hi tyler how are you mate you okay yeah i'm good i'm good then how are you I'm good, mate. Okay, you took that very well. That was, uh, you meant to laugh or something. It's not the worst thing I've been called today. Oh, today? That's even better. Uh, what are you drinking, mate? What are you having? I am um, a bit like Alex. Big bottle of water. That's a giant bottle of water there. Giant bottle of water. Alex, come on, show it off. There it is. <laughs> Alex's is as bigger than mine. Let's, let's just put that out there now. Girthy little chode. Ben, what are you drinking? <laughs> Uh, I've got the uh, cross players mug and I'm drinking Black Forest Gatto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hot chocolate. Oh dear. Okay. Okay. Is it tasty? Is it as good as you hoped? It is, it's lovely. It's possibly a little bit on the sweet side. A little bit too sweet, but it's pretty good. Hmm. Can't Sweet like me. Uh, and if you like more of me, go over to patreon.com slash the cross players from as little as two pound a month, just like Tyler. You can gain access to exclusive content perks and giveaways. Uh, have your con- say on the content we make, uh, just like Tyler did as well. Tyler, you've got a wonderful place now in our WhatsApp group as well, haven't you? Yeah, I have. It's, yeah. A, it's a great place to be. Yeah. The back and forward in there is like nothing else. Yeah, you were just started piping up more as well and getting on my back, which is great. Welcome to the team. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of getting on my back, take two and Zynga, 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 
Zynga Tower? Zynga, I, just... I think. Zynga. Zynga, okay. Uh, they have merged uh, in the biggest deal in gaming history until Microsoft buys Activision, Activision Blizzard at least. So over on PCGame.com, they continue. Take-Two and Zynga, 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 have merged in what for the moment is the biggest corporate deal in gaming history. The stockholders of each company approved all proposals last Thursday and shares of Zynga ceased trading after market close on Friday. Uh, yesterday, Zynga shareholders received three dollars fifty. I'm not going to go into that. What do we think about this, Alex? I'm going to come to you first, mate. Um, it, it felt like such a big deal at the time until, as you say, kind of Microsoft came along like a week later and gazumped them. Um, yeah. But obviously, a huge, a huge ferry into the mobile market for Take Two here, which is kind of where things are going. Probably the bit of their. Um, repertoire that they were missing so it makes sense for take two to kind of go and do this deal um interesting to see what franchises they then now take out into the mobile market it is interesting and just a bit of a reminder um and tyler i'll come to your thoughts now but obviously take two own grand theft auto uh red dead also owns nba 2k wwe games bioshock borderlands civilization uh, Zynga is best known for Farmville. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you interested in mobile gaming at all, Tyler? I've I've kind of dabbled with it a few times. I've wanted to get really into it, but I've never found anything that's grabbed me in the same way. I think Slay the Spire would have been the thing that would have done it. Yeah, because it's just one of those things that I feel like is so well suited. Or if they put, you know, if they put Peggle on mobile, I will buy a second phone because, <laughs> despite the fact that it's the simplest thing ever, I will just sit and play that on a massive TV for hours at a time for some reason. I like it. Ben, mobile gaming? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really do much of it, but uh, I have. I have played mobile games in the past, um, but no, it's not my preferred format. That's what, the, that's what the Switch is for, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And the, uh, I, I, to Steam be honest, deck. I look down on anyone that plays mobile games. <laughs> just saying. Okay. I despise it. So overall, in terms of the deal, anyone really bothered about it? Does it really scratch anyone's itch? Anyone excited? No, I, really. I want to see if it goes the other way. So this is Take Two buying Zynga. Like, what are they? What IPs does Zynga have that are of value to Take Two to take the other way? Literally, Farmville and Words with Friends. But apparently, oh, uh, now Words with Friends that was that was a banger. It was a good banger. But a huge slate of successful mobile titles, including Golf Rival, the CSR racing games. And a raft of casino type games. That's all on PCGamer.com. So, so yeah, this has to be this has to be Take Two trying to take their IPs mobile. And I guess it's, it's what does that look like? I guess mm. it's interesting, but again, it seems very similar to what Square Enix are doing over infrastructure building. Um, this seems to be very similar. You know, we're, we're buying or merging with Zynga because we feel that maybe our infrastructure isn't la- or is lacking in the mobile space. What can we do over there to? Get more out of people. Yeah, yeah. I hope it doesn't. I hope it's not another. Was it EA and Popcap? Did they buy? Yeah, and it's... then they just never put anything out again. Uh, is it? Is it just a talent acquisition rather than an IP play? Possibly, might Could be, be the case. So they can churn out more smaller games, even if not one hundred percent just mobile games. Maybe they just get get the talent in so they can do more rather than just putting out one game every six years um and, and then i suppose on the other side of it it could be the income from the mobile market makes it well enough just to come in it's a bit like they're saying in the activision deal for microsoft with the amount of revenue that the king side of that deal will bring andrews from candy mm. crush i mean mm. those type of games are huge and yeah. farmville very much feels like a thing of the past but maybe i just don't know but it yeah, certainly right, felt right. that way um, I wasn't that excited about this at the time when it was first announced. Was it January? Yeah. You know, for the reasons we've just said. But um, it's weird. That it's, uh, yeah, it's, it has, like Alex said right at the top, it's just been completely overshadowed now by Microsoft throwing their money around and then Sony buying Bungie. And then mm. we're almost like anticipating who's Where's the next big one? Gobbled up next. And allegedly, the next big one is Apple is in talks to buy EA Gaming and also Disney and Amazon are also potential suitors for EA Gaming as well. On 9to5Mac.com, video game publisher Electronic Arts, EA, is actively seeking a potential buyer or merger. Apple has reportedly been in talks with the company about buying EA 
uh, according to Puck. No idea who that is. Uh, Disney and Amazon have also been in talks about purchasing the video game company. The Redwood City-based firm has published like, hits like Apex Legends, Madden and the Sims franchise. Uh, the idea for a buyout or merger came after Microsoft purchased Activision Blizzard for $68 billion earlier this year. And as you said, Ben, shortly after Sony purchased Bungie as well. According to Puck, EA ideally would like a merger so Andrew Wilson can remain CEO of the combined company. So there we go. Um, it does say on as well, EA's roots actually go back to Apple back in 1982. Apple's then director of strategy and marketing, Trip Hawkins, what a great name, uh, left the company to start EA. A buyout wouldn't be Apple's first venture into gaming. However, the Cooper Twin uh, company unveiled its gaming service, Apple Arcade, back in 2019. I, I am actually, I made the joke before by lifting all my Apple products up and my Apple pen, but I am very excited by Apple wanting to dip their toe into something like this um, because i not really been mooted Apple looking at any massive service but it's also a little bit of a concern for people that might be on Apple um, Apple platforms I know Tyler you said that before yeah I, I just it feels like a very Apple thing to do for them to buy EA and then take it away from certainly Microsoft I don't know what the Apple relationship with Sony is like but I imagine not great because they're you know they compete in a lot of the same spaces in other markets um whether you get an apple nintendo deal yeah maybe that'd be nice mm. bring fantasia to the switch wouldn't complain <laughs> yeah i think that i think um disney would have made more sense to me as like a potential candidate for ea um yeah. just because some of the games as well that they've been producing obviously ea have um looked after quite a lot of star wars franchises franchise and done quite well with it recently um Alex, I don't yeah. know if you'd be interested. They haven't got it anymore, though, have they? No. It's, uh, I think recently... it's from, from next year it goes. This is yeah. the last yeah. year they've got it. Yeah. So yeah. You, um, who is it? Quantic Dream and Ubisoft have both said they've got Star Wars projects in the wings, ready for when that expires. On, on you go, Alex. What are you going to say? Um, I mean, I think it's been quite clear that this is something EA have wanted to do. I think when you now look at some of the decisions going out there, like stepping back from the licensing for FIFA and just trying to simplify their business model probably a bit by getting rid of those kind of reliances on licenses. Obviously, some of them would probably quite like to keep, but other ones where they're paying a lot of money, like just try and streamline their business, make it a little bit more profitable if they can. I mean, the thing with Apple is Apple are very much like we are top tier, we are premium, and you mm. can't really say of late that EA fit that bill. I mean, they've had some good games in there, but they're not really like firing on all cylinders. They're more pumping out the same games. I mean, because any of the kind of big franchises that they've tried to reboot, like some of the later things in like, the Mass Effect series, um, Titanfall kind of lived and died, even though it was such a great game. Like your BioWare's, your um, oh, no, where's the other one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No. Now. Yeah. BioWare, yeah, got, BioWare had Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Yeah, yeah. And the last few games in that series haven't done well. It is a lot of pumping out sports titles, um, yeah. which they've done before. The only big new stuff they've done the last few years that's had any level of success was what Fallen Order and yeah. Apex. Although Apex is massive, Apex so, is huge. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it's absolutely massive. And they're smaller. The smaller games are well, Knockout City. Uh, mm. it, didn't they? It takes two. Didn't they publish that as well? Yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah, yeah they did. did. That's a good yeah. point. Mm. But then Battlefield, yeah. which should have been huge, was just an absolute tragedy. Yeah, that yeah. was yeah. That mistake. Very wasn't. badly for them. Slow stuff. The other like ones that, I was it? trying to think of the name, and I couldn't think of the name of the developer. Is it Dice? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Dice yeah. the guys that do Battlefield and something else. <coughs> Battle. What's the other? The Star Wars one. Star Wars Battlefront. Battlefront. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, go on, Dan. No, no. Go, 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 go. No, I thought we were moving on. I was just going to clarify. You asked because um, you're unsure about Puck, who that was. Go on. Um, it's actually a character from Midsummer Night's Dream, <laughs> <laughs> which was the second play. <laughs> Yeah. Segway out of what? Uh, <laughs> what the puck? Apparently, uh, the list of games that have been released on uh, PlayStation Plus new service over in Asia uh, today, I think it was. Um, it's far fewer than 700 estimate. Apparently, it's only 269 titles. And Ben, there's another couple of things and caveats as well, which people aren't happy with. Indeed, uh, the people are not happy with um, 
Well, I think they're apparently the 50 hertz or the 50 hertz PAL versions rather than the, the all signal dancing Ex 60 hertz. Explain ones. that to me. Explain that to me. Well, Dan, um, it's how many uh, hertz? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I get that. That's cool. Yeah, so there yeah, you go. Fine. Okay. So, and Alex, what was the other thing that people are pissed off about? Um, that apparently, if you if you obtain the PlayStation Plus membership via a discounted method, then to upgrade to the new tiers, you have to basically top up the discounted method of the discount that you already received, and then pay the the difference on top of that. So. You basically lose what you discounted by subscribing, so they're charging you more if you were on a discounted membership. That's shit, isn't it? That's bad. It's, it's yeah. appalling. That's got to be a mistake. There, you, you'd hope so, but it's the most Sony thing you've ever heard. Um, and on top of that, this one really didn't surprise me, but it seems to it seems to have a lot of people can up in arms that you can't choose to upgrade for a month or two or three like if you upgrade you need to pay up front for all of the remaining period on your contract yeah uh, that part made sense but, uh, if you've even like if you've stacked up to 2024 you need to pay the difference up to 2024 and to me that makes sense that's what i would expect to happen i think it's too complicated to say oh you can just add a month here and another month there and another month there I think yeah it's not it doesn't tend to be how these things work mm. That's good. You know, you break the rules. That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Them's the rules. But to be yeah. fair, though, the way that Microsoft have handled, like, they really haven't cared, have they, in terms of, like, subscription stacking when they had the fiasco with, what was, what was it, EA? It was EA service, wasn't it, where you were able to buy that really yeah. cheap and then that yeah. stacked as well? Yeah. And it was just, like, they really didn't care. But that must have hit them quite hard financially as well if they were allowing those things to stack. No, I don't know whether that's their long-term plan. Though. Like, they're quite happy to take a loss in the short term because of what Game Pass has done for them. You mm -hmm. know, they were in a bad place. Um, you know, Big Phil came out and said, look, this is all the stuff that we're going to do. And they might have taken losses getting there, but it feels like they're very much about to go into the black in a pretty big way with it. Mm. Could be, yeah. If they've got that install base now, and then they've got a map. It's like Netflix, isn't it? I suppose people... I subscribe anyway because I use Netflix probably every couple of days, so I've always got a subscription. But so many people will watch something they want and then cancel. But when there's like slated releases coming up for like three months, like Better Call Saul, Ben, um, where it's like episode after episode after episode, you're going to have it for at least two months, aren't you? So if Microsoft are going to do the same thing when a flurry of games comes out, they're going to get a massive, massive spike in subscriptions, which kind of makes sense. So yeah, I get your point. But then also with that deal, I suppose, as well, like you're going to let people do things like, you know, like we did, where mm. you VPN and you buy your foreign Xbox Live and then you convert it all because of the conversion thing. Because then you're paying them for three years worth, so you can't do exactly what you're saying, Dan. Yeah. You can't have it for three months, drop it till there's something else you want to play. Completely like, fair. I am committed to Game Pass until 2024, I want to say. <laughs> like, yeah, I paid yeah, that yeah. money. They're getting that revenue out of me, and that's fun. Yeah. Yeah, some people got games, Game Pass subscriptions longer than marriages, which is going to be quite hilarious. <laughs> uh, Alex, your marriage will fall through if you don't uh, don't perk up and stop buying Game Pass. Are you excited by uh, <laughs> the Sony proposition wow. now that you've heard this latest news? Is it a Game Pass killer for you? or Not really. I mean, it's exactly as I expected it to be. I think people expecting 700 games were kind of living in a little bit of dreamland it was never going to start with 700 games it was going to basically take what was on ps now what was kind of historically on ps plus add in what is it five psp games and 12 ps1 and ps2 games for that top tier which again is pretty poor um and sprinkle some of the bigger ps5 games on top so it's kind of exactly as you think and it, i mean it's a good service there's no denying that and for the price it is a decent service and it will evolve into a better service, but I think they've made so many kind of schoolboy errors getting to this stage, and I know we're still what, a month out from getting it in the UK, but it's, there's no clarity around what's coming, when it's coming, how it's coming, what they're doing with it, and I think they're just kind of shooting themselves in the foot, whereas they could have like just been very upfront. here's exactly what you're getting, we're not just going to give you up to this and up to that. Um and you wouldn't be sitting here now, everyone going, you said we'd have this many games and that's what we've got. So they've kind of just made their own problems well, from the offset. Let me give you some clarity, Alex, because I know you like peace of mind, you like routine. Do you want to know what you're getting? Some pick up and play. Oh, 
I'm not doing that. Pick up and play. Ben, what have you picked up? Um, well, thanks for asking about my opinion about the Sony stuff. Um, really I have picked up... Uh, I've picked, <laughs> picked up uh, Eastwood. Finally came out physically. Okay. Yeah. So I grabbed that. And, um, I've got that as well. A, a lovely little package. It comes with some nice stickers as well. It's nice to see publishers putting nice. in a little bit of extra effort. So... Shout out to I am eight bit, not a sponsor. Um, really good, nice, and I will get around to playing that one of these days. Um, but do you want to know what I have been playing? Should I go straight into that? Well, yeah, go on then. Fine, if you want yeah, to do that way, sure. I chip you off before. Um, I've uh, finished off a couple of games this week. Actually, it's been a productive week. It's productive in one way, um, time wasting. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it. Uh, <laughs> Clock fraud. So Tunic, Tunic, no, 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 no. Tunic, um, on the which is again great Game Pass game, exclusive console, exclusive as well uh, to the Xbox platform. Which is how would you describe Tunic? It's kind of a, uh, it's very much styled on old school two uh, D Zelda, but it's more of a kind of you know half isometric kind of view. Um, What's the like a forty-five degree angle, kind of like Animal Crossing? It's not important. You get what I mean. Um, and it's kind of, uh, but it's not really a Zelda game. There's elements of it. It looks like it. The it's kind of structured like it, but there's more. It's it's very kind of uh, Souls-like, more so than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly in, obviously, the combat is very kind of deliberate and quite difficult. Um, particularly, the bosses are, are very challenging. Mm -hmm. And it's got that, that thing you hate, Dan, where you die and you have to go back and get all your shit that you dropped. Um, so I've heard about the bosses as well and people saying that it, it's got a really lovely flow in the game. I think the guys on IGN UK were talking about it. Really lovely right. flow to the game. And then when it gets to the bosses, it's like, oh, fuck. Like, you've got to really persevere and you lose all your shit. And then you're kind of left with, like, absolutely nothing. And you've just got to grind and grind and grind to beat the boss. Did you find that at all? Absolutely not. No. Okay. Okay. Didn't, cool. No, I, uh, my experience with it was no nowhere near that grueling. Um, okay. I think some of the bosses took like three, maybe five attempts. Um, which you know, coming off the back of Elden Ring, you're like, yeah, that's fine. That's happy days. That's, that's yeah. a walk in the park. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that I thought that was fine. They are. I would say there's a difficulty spike with the bosses. Yeah. Which you probably wouldn't anticipate before you've encountered the first one but um yeah you, you kind of get through that and but also i think the the kind of secret source in this game is this in-game instruction manual yeah it's beautiful isn't if it? you've heard it if you've heard anyone talk about tunic this will be the thing that they focus on because it's it's not only gorgeous but it is vital to being successful in the game hmm. so like before i encountered that first boss i found a page because all these pages are dotted around the overworld and i found one that basically tells you roughly what level you need to be at to fight that boss um so oh. i knew that okay well that's the stat that i need to upgrade first and kind of put x amount into attack and x amount into defense and then i should be all right when i stumble across this boss so i i guess i was like prepared because i'd i knew that i needed to study the instruction manual it wasn't just a you know, fancy thing to have on a pause menu. It is vital to to um, succeeding in the game. So that's really cool, and it's really um, <clears throat> kind of makes it really rewarding finding these pieces. It's not just little MacGuffins that you have to find for no apparent reason. It is sort of crucial to enjoying it. Um, and yeah, it's it's just really well done. Really, extremely. I think considering it's just one guy that made it, as far yeah. as I know um it's just yeah phenomenal and yeah i think definitely a, a five out of five game for me I really mean, no complaints wow. whatsoever yeah 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 i think um that really the only bit where it kind of dragged was slightly towards the end and a lot of games are guilty of this but there's a it got a little bit kind of busy work i kind of mm. felt like i'd i was at that crescendo and then it's like right now go off and find these six bits and bobs and it's like, ugh, can I be asked? But luckily, um, as I do, because I'm a mental person, I 
listen to reviews when I'm playing a game. Yeah. Because I want to just soak it all in and enjoy. Like I'm, I'm obsessed with that particular thing. So I'm we know. To take it in. You know, <laughs> when, you, um, when you're asleep. Like. I think I was, yeah, I was listening to one review and it reminded me that there's this difficulty setting where you can um, basically put on, you You'll can kill. not die. Yeah. Uh, okay. You can like there's a no failure state one. So when I was doing this busy work, I just switched that on. So mm. I knew that I didn't have to bother about fighting all these overworld enemies and stuff. And then it just made that last bit a bit of a breeze. And I kind of like, I'm enjoying games like that. It was the same with Sifu a couple of weeks ago. These games that give you the option to... Yeah, yeah. Right, I was enjoying that challenge and now I'm not. So I'll just drop that down and now I'm enjoying it again. So it's, yeah, really good. Tailored that experience to my own liking. But Wait. yeah, thoroughly recommended to any Dark Souls or Zelda fans or anyone just likes really good games yeah i liked your analogy of it's this year's death death store i thought that was a really really good way of explaining it so yeah yeah i think that's accurate and um i I feel like it's not getting as much love as death store like no i don't know why it feels like it maybe it was the timing that it came out but it feel like people tried it and then dropped off it very quickly yeah um maybe because of that difficulty spike i don't know but I, there's a lot to love in it so please give just, it a go just that thing i think at the moment with anything that's souls related or souls compared you're going to get the elden ring kind of not backlash yeah. but it's that thing i'm gonna i'm gonna analogize with food but if you you go like to an amazing takeaway and that's the takeaway and then you try someone new you're like fuck that was shit i wish i'd gone back to that takeaway it's that kind of feeling and that kind of rotation at the moment with some games where i'm like even open world games at the moment, comparing back to it, going, oh, I can't do this, or there's no flexibility in this way, or even a battle style, I'm not. So yeah, I kind of get it. Um, but it's also an indie game, so I don't think you can really yeah. judge it on the same magnitude as what you can with Elden. No, Man. not at all. And it's gorgeous. Like it, It's really pretty, and it's uh, the music is superb. Like Listen to the soundtrack, and you, you'll want to play the game. Like It's lovely. So Yeah. I'm in. Highly, highly recommended. Anything else? Uh, yes, very quickly. I finally ended my 13 Sentinels journey. Yeah. To the end of that. I think it took me about 35 hours in the end in total. When's the, uh, kind of... when's the mouse mat arrive? <laughs> That's <laughs> right here. <Ooh. laughs> um, it's not, it's not really that sort of game, to be honest. It's not as like weeby as you possibly think it is. Um, you did share some yeah. like screenshots and video clips, which make know, it look I... exceptionally <laughs> weeby. So. I picked out the worst one, and even even right at the very end, there's like one character who's is quite funny. It's probably one of my favourite characters in it, but he's yeah, he says something inappropriate to this okay. girl. And it's just like ah, classic, you guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's it's really good. Like considering there's thirteen protagonists and you're playing bits and bobs of their story like completely just mixed up in a, in a really bizarre way so it's, it's pretty overwhelming all the shit that happens and it's basically everything you can think sci-fi wise that will possibly be thrown into a story they've included it and the kitchen sink the fact that they bring all of these strands together at the end to something that starts to feel like it might make a bit of sense yeah um i think that's really impressive so uh i think that again the only negative for me was it's that thing getting towards the end of a game mm. and now okay now i've got to do 10 of these real-time strategy sections before i can unlock the rest of the story yeah and that and those those sections are fine and i enjoyed them but i enjoyed them when i wanted a, a short break from the story stuff having to do a load of them just to plow through to get mm. to the end was a bit so again dropped it down to casual i mean it, they're easy anyway like i was getting s rank in all of them yeah. just on normal but dropped it down to casual so i don't have to think about it and then you know got to the end of the game but yeah really really weird but um it's one of those where i need to go away and watch a few youtube videos to kind of explain the plot okay in full i think but um what console was that yeah. on that was on the Switch. It was originally a PS4 exclusive, I think, but it okay. came out on the Switch uh, February time, I think. Okay. So, yeah. I might give it very cool. Cool. Yeah. 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 Cool. Speaking of very cool, Tyler, I'm going to come to you now. What have you, uh, what have you picked up, mate? Anything Anything nice? Anything tasty? <laughs> That's no, I've been saying no to, to picking up stuff. 
because I know that I've got some stuff I want to work through. I've got a little bit of a backlog that Oof. the stuff I've said I was going to get to for months and I haven't because Elden Ring happened. A disciplined man on the podcast. Wow. Here we go. It's it's all going to come at once, like from probably the beginning of next month, it's going to go a bit mad because we've got Strikers, yeah. Xenoblade. There'll probably be some silly deal on a Switch game that I'll end up picking up. I nearly bought Darksiders 3 actually yesterday for Switch. Yeah, I've been looking at that. Out of that. Yeah, I've been looking at Darksiders. I love the first two of those games. Yeah. It's often very cheap as well, isn't it? Like mm. under a tenner. Physically. Is it? The third, I'd yeah. seen the third one that cheap. Oh, maybe I'm getting it wrong. I'm sure I picked one Wasn't up it? for like £8. Pound. Yeah, maybe friend of like friend of the show, Sissy Jones, voiced someone in 3 as well, I think. She played one of the characters. I can't remember who it was. Uh, remember that I'll have to check it later alright so you've been sensible with your pickups but what you've been playing then I am about three weeks behind you guys I finally finished Elden Ring on hey. Sunday night well done hey. GG which yeah I mean I can't say anything that you guys haven't said about that game I I tried Dark Souls a couple of years ago mm-hmm. put 20 hours in put it down before it cost me the cost of a new switch <laughs> and it's like hey, I've tried they're not for me this isn't my thing and seeing the time that you guys have with Elden Ring, especially with you know most of you guys having not touched like a Souls game before, and the good time that you were having with it, it's like I just I need to give this a go. Um, so yeah, picked it up, and I just I've not been addicted to a game like that since Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it's it's there's just like you know I I stayed up till like you know for me for me it's quite late. I stayed up till gone midnight a couple of days ago when I was mm. getting near the end. And I went to bed, and I'm lying in bed, and I'm going, right, what do I want to do when I next start playing? Like, what are the things, yes. what are the story things I need to do? What do I want to do for my build? What bosses do I want to go fight that I've found? All this sort of stuff. And it's just, yeah, it, it's just sensational. It's rare that you get build, to... Uh, I was just going to say, you mentioned build. What, what build did you go for? Uh, I ended up going for intelligence and dexterity. So primarily Katana, and then had the ability to dip into magic as and when I felt like cheating. Come on. Cheese. Don't start that one. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there were a few points where I was like, no, do you know what? I don't want to fight you. I'm just going to stand in a corner and hit you with Comet Azure and then run away again. Yeah. It's still fighting, Tyler. It's still, yeah. You're still inflicting damage just from afar. Yeah, yeah I, did, I did the I last time. Yeah. I did the last ten percent of his health bar with an actual sword, so it still counts, right? That's fine. That's okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We need to get it's Ben like a. Yeah. I was going to say we need to get Ben some sort of t-shirt that says "Easy Easy Mode is Fine," you know, just on his t-shirt because it seems to be the running theme at the moment with Ben. I was going to say with um, with Elden Ring as well. Like the wonderful part about that game is that I didn't want it to end. So when I was getting nearer and nearer to like the final boss, I was like looking up at the staircase going, oh shit, like that's it. You know, do I want to go and do anything else? Is there any more pockets of areas that I've not really explored yet? And the amazing part is there was, there was loads. Yeah, um, so if I want to go back and do the platinum, you know, I'm not really going to get bored of that game, I don't think, in terms of like a second playthrough. But have you thought about maybe uh, New Game Plus or are you not quite there yet? I wanted to. I really wanted to. You know, there was two, there's two big bosses that I didn't do, so the Dragon Lords and Millennia, both of which I put like an hour into. Yeah. Got close a few times and was just like, you know what, I'm not I'm not doing this. Yeah. Um but yeah, I I could go back and put another three or four hours in to do the two of them. There's probably a few of the little dungeons and cat homes and stuff that I didn't do. Yeah. Or didn't finish. Um I could put another fifteen, twenty hours into that playthrough. I could have dived into a second playthrough and been like, oh, you know, how quick can I do it? A second playthrough now knowing where everything is and how the story runs and things like that. Yeah. I've still got the Melania statue and I just don't feel I can get out of the box and put it up until I've actually beaten her. So I was like, <laughs> I've left it in the, I've left it in the box purposefully until that time comes and then I'll put it on the... Here we go. I'll, I'll hold mine up then. <laughs> <laughs> My there trophy. Your trophy go. for Cheesner. Um, anything else, Tyler? Playing anything else at the moment, mate? Yeah, I, I've started dabbling a little bit in Kirby. Um, bought that for my son when it came out. And I was like, you know, this is this is a perfect game to play after Elden Ring because it's completely the opposite in just about yeah. every way. <laughs> it, you, you don't need any context. There's no, you know, I felt like with Elden Ring I had to sit there and play for like 15, 20 minutes and go and just do some general exploring. 
they feel like I was like on point with like the, the almost rhythm game aspect of it. Whereas with Kirby, I just picked it up, like wandering around, following things, just pick the powers up straight away. There's no need to explain any of it. It's just it's just simple, light-hearted, fun. Yeah. No complexity to it. But at the same time, it's like it's challenging me just enough with some of the little challenges and waddle dees to collect and stuff that I'm just, yeah. It's the complete opposite of Elden Ring, and I love it for so many different reasons. It's good. I think they played a blinder releasing that game around the time of Elden yeah, Ring because I think yeah. so many... I, I did exactly the same. That was the next game that I played after Elden Ring. I bet so many people have just gone, oh my God, I just want to play a Kirby game. <laughs> like, it's just... Yeah, yeah I, I did the same. Yeah. There you go. Love it. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Chunks of that. Um, I started, and I just every time I say the name of this game, it makes me laugh. <laughs> um, on Alex and Ben's suggestion, I gave Floppy Nights a go today. <laughs> okay. And yeah, it's, it is. I'd seen it coming, and I was like, oh, you know, it looks interesting, looks a bit quirky. Hadn't really looked into gameplay. Um, looked into gameplay when it was bought up this morning. Put it down, and I was like, yeah, I'll give it a go. It's a strategy game, which I'm historically terrible at. Yeah, like I think I got halfway through Mario Rabbids and couldn't get any further, so gave up on it. Just for you know some context on how bad I am at these games. Um, but the the card game side of it really appealed to me because big fan of Slay the Spire. I played a lot of like trading card game stuff as a kid and loved it. Um, so pick a couple hours into that today, and it's a, it's a fun little game. Yeah, Ben is gonna Ben is gonna love it. He is gonna be singing its praises. It's gonna be his next five out of five this time next week. <laughs> I only give fours or fives. Pretty <laughs> easy. Has it got an easy mode? Uh, <laughs> that's the. That's if the there is, then I'd like to know where it is because <laughs> okay. I, I didn't get that far outside of the tutorial before I kept finding myself getting taken to pieces by these little cute cartoon plants. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, mm. I think you've given me the perfect segue there, Alex. You've been playing Floppy Nights as well. I have indeed been playing Floppy Nights. What are your it thoughts? Is very hard. Oh, okay, okay. Um, it's not floppy. It's uh, hard. It's not yeah. floppy. It's hard indeed. Yeah, but it's a it's a really interesting little game. I mean, to, to kind of take that idea of the card building deck builder and then add it into the strategy game, it's just it really works. But it takes a lot of thinking. I, I didn't get long to play it, but I want to spend a bit more time on it and try and work out the mechanics a bit more. But the kind of nice thing, obviously, your kind of card builder games are more. Or well, here's your deck, and this is the actions you can take as the characters. But it's part of the deck building here the characters are in the deck so depending on what cards you pull out you start with one which is like your commander and you, you kind of go with them and they're the other one you need to keep alive so as soon as they die like your kind of play is over right. but you'll get like support characters that come through the come through the deck and then you can add like them in to kind of then go and fight with you so you've got a little, little gang to go and take on all the enemies and each there's also the different objectives in the levels as well so some of them it's just to kill all the enemies some of them is it's like get to this base point and hold it for three turns or so cool. it kind of takes a different approach to what you actually need to do so i say i only played that for maybe about an hour or so i managed but i definitely want to go and try and dig into it a little bit further but this week's been a little bit of a kind of game pass trek um so i've done that i was also kind of get dragged back into tunic last night as i was saying to ben mm. um there was a a reward thing to do to get an achievement in Tunic. There was 500 reward <laughs> points going, so I'm like, right, I need to go and get this before it expires, so I'll, I'll start, um, start playing Can't Tunic again. And with suddenly... guy. Hilarious. <laughs> well, like your only full subscription for the month. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but it really, like, to everything Ben was in there, it really clicked this time, because I started Tunic when it released, which was in the middle of when we were all playing... Um, Elden Ring so it really just got dropped and I've never managed to go back to it but last night it really did click so I'm looking forward to finishing that but the other one that I've been playing is Citizen Sleeper so I started Citizen Sleeper hmm. and I've heard quite a lot of people talking about it and it's a bit it's not a game I would ever really tried it's a really kind of difficult game to describe so it's it's almost like a tabletop RPG, but I kind of create your own adventure. Some bits a bit narrative driven, some bits dice rolling, loads of different mechanics going on at the same time. And this kind of, so you, your your character is basically this. What I'm taking from a person who's given up and basically signed up to be part of a corporation where their consciousness 
has then been put into like a cyborg almost. I'm probably describing this <laughs> incredibly wrong, but and they've then been stuck in this kind of stuck within this corporation and the start of the game is you've found a way to escape. So you find yourself on this planet. Um don't know if it's a planet, a ship. It's kinda of hard to describe, but you then are trying to work out how to survive. But there's so many different mechanics going on at the same time. So you can be sitting there and it's just a bit like you're meeting the characters and you're going through the dialogue options and nothing happens. But you have, essentially, your body is dying and there's no way to stop it from dying because as soon as you escape from this incorporation, the technology within the suit only survives with the kind of supplements that they give you. So right, you've okay. got no way of essentially surviving, but to kind of unfurl it, you've got the, another three mechanics that you need to weave on top of that. So you have like a life bar, which is kind of based on your food and your hunger, and you need to try and keep that topped up. And then you have a set of up to six dice, which you get on each turn. And that then dictates your outcomes and the tasks that you need to do on each cycle. So once all your dice run out, your cycle's over, you then need to sleep, which brings things down. And it, it's but as quite complex and sounds quite complex and quite hard to describe, but it's engrossing. Like I've totally been drawn into it for the couple of hours that I've played. You've done um, um done a good job explaining it to be honest. It's got good Metacritic yeah. reviews at the moment, it's on eighty three. Uh some it's reason. like Disco Elysium in a way. Yeah, Disco Elysium, but um uh, what's the name of the Blade Runner as well? So it's the Ooh, it's a piece of game. Bit, like to start with, it sounded like was it Altered Carbon, the Netflix series that was a bit like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I think one of the reviews said basically this is Blade Runner, but you play a replicant. As in, like, that's the kind of the guise of it. You're playing like this worker that's escaping and then going from there. So. Looks interesting though. I like the idea. It's, of it. it's, it's definitely interesting. I, I mean, I'm looking forward to kind of getting back to it and working out. So you're really given like five or six different drives that they call them, but it's basically like kind of mm -hmm. missions, and you need to upgrade your character to be able to get a better successful outcome in the task that you're doing. Um, and then obviously the higher the dice, so the more success you get, which then will give you like currency or it'll fill these different um, progress bars on the objectives. Uh, to progress it so yeah definitely one worth a look if that's the kind of thing that you like um a lot of reading again but yeah i was gonna say it's a lot of reading is it yeah hmm. okay mm. okay anything else alex um the only other thing i've been playing is i can't really say too much about it but i've been playing ko the kangaroo which releases on this the day this podcast comes out on friday which i hopefully have a review mm. when it comes in so Mm, very nice. It's interesting. Cool. Official combat trailer. Just looking at the uh, the interview there. Okay, so I'll, I'll kind of briefly talk about what I've picked up and played. So I've picked up Dragon Quest on the PS4. Still in the wrapper. Oh, what yeah. cracker of a game. Yeah, because I... Absolute cracker. Tried it on Switch, didn't gel with it. So I've just thought I'll throw it on the PS4 and then see how I, how I get on with it uh, on there. And it was buttons. You just play down Game Pass. Game Pass. But yeah, it's it would not, have been a really good excuse to use that big black monolithic box under your desk, then. Yeah. It would be, yeah. I oh, know. Kick it right now. That's <laughs> the Xbox, Alex. So I've also got Red Dead Redemption 2 for the Xbox. Pick that up. Because, um, again, I was like, I want to buy it for the Xbox so I can try and stream the thing. So I will I will try that as well. Uh, and then Ben part persuaded me to get Triangle Strategy um, to try and give Square Enix another shot within their <laughs> wonderful games that they make that look mm -hmm. very like the game that I shall not main, uh, name. Um, so played about an hour and a half of Triangle Strategy. I've just finished the first battle. Have you? Yeah, I've played a little bit of it, mate. Oh. a little bit of time on that. Oh, no, oh, like, did you? It's like double the average game length. <laughs> yeah, it was. We'll talk about, that. <laughs> talk about the game that was more than average on in a second, but... Um, that's really good though, Dan. Because I was, I was, I was, I, was, I knew that you picked that up, and I was like, ah, oh, that's my boy. Um, I but I, I was going to propose that you know, 
I wasn't expecting you to play it straight away. So I was going to say, like, right, if you if you play that game and see it through to the end, I will do the same for Final Fantasy Twelve. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> deal. But okay. now you've already pla- you've already started it, so it's, it's a moot point, isn't it? No, it's not. Well, you can still commit to that because well, that seems completely fair. Well, well, well you can do a uh, It was a gift. Uh, so <laughs> you should definitely definitely play that game um, but yeah the, the battle's really fun the first battle goes on quite long which I quite enjoyed um, so originally when I was going to jump into the game it felt like it's trimmed down a lot of the bullshit that Octopath did poorly so all of the stories just delivered it's three warring kingdom, uh, kingdoms classic Square Enix they've all got like a separate um, what would you call it like a resource thank you they're... Yes, yeah, separate resource that you're able to, you know, that means that their area is important and there's constant war kind of blah, blah, blah. However, they've had this truce for 30 odd years. Um, the main character protagonist in it is getting married to one of the uh, princesses from the other kingdom. And that's the kind of opening gambit. Just very, very straight to the point. Really well written. The voice acting's actually not that annoying. Uh, I thought it was mm. quite good. Um, but yeah, the highlight of it is the is the battle system. Um, really, really straightforward and simple. Uh, doesn't do a lot of the convoluted things that other games similar to it do where it's like over explaining a load of things and there's a load of different skill moves and skill points it just it's very intuitive it makes sense so I'm not going to talk too much more about it because I'm looking forward to playing more and then I will give my full thoughts in a couple of weeks and hopefully it won't be like the, the 30 hours that put into Octopath so yeah props to you Ben props to you mate so I'll good, do that good it's not to take your word on these things and it is it is only about 30, I think it's only, but I think it's about 30 to 40 hours to finish. Yeah. So it's not Octopath, you know, you know. No. That was about 80 hours, wasn't it? It just feels like on easy mode, though, Ben, I have to ask. No, I popped it on normal. <laughs> uh, I'm not putting it on easy mode. It's not me, I Tyler. Think I, like, it. I think I played it on normal. It doesn't seem especially challenging. Um, no. Like, even again, I know the first fight is the first fight, but. You can. It, it's one of those games where if you lose, it's probably because you've done something wrong. So there's not really like too much of an element of luck to it that I'm aware of, but Ben, I'm sure you can comment that's, on that. That's the only thing that does piss me off with some strategy games, like turn-based ones, is obviously the battles can take like an hour. And if yeah. you fuck up right towards the end, you're like, oh, I've got to do all that again. But I think, if I remember rightly, I think this one saves throughout the Like battle. a checkpoint type system. Yeah, I think. Because I remember playing Valkyria Chronicles and... Um, oh. Just balls balls up a battle quite late on, and then just had to keep going back to the start of it. And it was the same with uh, Wargroove when that first came out. You just had to keep replaying the same ones, and it's yeah, ball lake. But yes, Triangle Strategy, great game. Well done, Dan. Thank Kudos. you, Ross. Cheers. Okay, let's do uh, Ben's tens tens. I don't even know how it goes. I don't know. Uh, I don't even think I've got the stinger for this. I've literally I fixed all the stingers before, and then clearly I've just missed one off. So uh, I'm just going to pretend to go. Ben stands. Ben stands. Oh, thanks. Cheers, Alex. Ruining the segment. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Echoing here. Yeah. Um, right, Ben stands. It's me hosting myself. Um, what I thought I would do, boys, because. To be honest with you, I think you can probably guess my top few games anyway. So I'm going to do it the other way around and start from one and then work my way up Ooh. to ten. Okay. Controversial. Hey, sure. it's my segment. I can do what the fuck I want. One question. Um, <laughs> what's that? Has one ever changed? No. Okay, that's fine. No. That was. It I was, was curious by that. It, no, it was, it was nailed on from the start. To Alex, did um, yours? No, no, I don't think no, mine, mine did. didn't. Mine didn't. Oh. Go on, Ben. Sorry, mate. The top. Just so, that's the thing. I think the the top ones are easier. Where you start having trouble is like fitting. Like, what's going to be the number ten? Because there's like twenty yeah. other games that yeah. could be. That could 10, be ten. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, but let's have a bit of fun with it this week. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start off each one. I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna play a bit of music from it, and you can guess. <laughs> okay. So here's here's music from my number one. Can you hear that? Yeah, yeah. Any guesses? Uh, it just reminds me of like 
playing that at like one in the morning and be like, fuck, and then turn it down. <laughs> no, it's coming. Yeah. Well, the, blare, the blaring white screen when I boot that up on PC. Oh, oh yeah. I'm playing in the dark. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's like yeah. a flash band. Oh, so, shit, shit, shit. Um, so, yeah, Elden Ring, without question. Um, mm. You know, a game, a, a very new game, but I loved it so much that I yeah, had to put it number one. Yeah. It's just, just no game has grabbed me by the balls and not let go for an entire month. And that is all I could think about. That's all I wanted to do. It was just be in that world, do every last thing that I could possibly do in it. And um, I, I was still looking forward to the end of it. Mm. Um, not in like a, not in the way I was describing earlier where, oh, this is dragging now. Let's get it out of the way. It was more like the looking forward to the freedom of being able to play something else because this game just absolutely just took hold of me. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was going to make a Lord of the Rings reference. I don't know enough about it. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it, I, it's just all all consuming gaming experience that I just, I think everyone should try and really like push through that initial bit of uh, difficulty that you encounter right at the start. Because it's so it's such a special game. Really is completely agree, and obviously we've all spoken about it. Um, Tyler had had his say a minute ago, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting any any real pushback from that. No, no, um, it's fine. Are you sure it's not any recency bias at all? Yeah, that's a tough I, one. I did I did think about that, but I thought um, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Should have done. No, no, um, no. I tried to be kind of fairly objective about it. Uh, and yeah, I, I think it's the only game of this length that I have I haven't played. I haven't put I don't put a hundred hours into games like I might have done, you know, FIFA back in the day or Rocket League over the course of several years. But mm. I've never just you know, just one hundred ten hours or something I put into this, which is just a ridiculous amount of time. Crazy. Um, but yeah, so it is no no question. But number two for me. Is hmm. no surprises there? No surprises at all. No surprises. Yep. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I should have faded that out. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'll just move the phone away from the mic. Yeah, Breath of the Wild. I honestly couldn't ever see any game bumping this off. Um, my number one spot personally this mm. this game just means the absolute world to me um getting me back into gaming again we've covered it many many times but just that recapturing that magic from your youth that you, just that love of games that being lost in a world and feeling like you're on an adventure the same thing that elden ring done yeah. but um that I just it's just magical and it's a, a franchise that I love and you know the excitement of having it on switch and being able to play it anywhere and it just it all just it all just kind of felt so perfect at like the timing of it um, and the re I think mainly the, the reason I put Elden Ring above it was there were still times when I took large breaks from playing hmm. Breath of the Wild like I, I dropped off and you know I haven't ever felt compelled to find all the um Corpses, the shrines. Yeah, of course. So even all the shrines. I haven't done all of them. I only found like that town is it Tarry Town or something? Hmm. After yeah. I'd finished it and I just went and I'd I'd then heard of it and thought, Oh, I'll just go back and have a little look. Hmm. So I didn't I don't know, as as special as it was, didn't feel like I had to get right into it the same way as I did Elden Ring and I think that's probably why ultimately what it came down to but yeah just a sublime game and I personally prefer the shrines over the dungeons I know a lot of people say yeah, I do. they they didn't like them but I like the bite size aspect of them and they never felt as threatening as a dungeon like growing up you know playing a Zelda game as a kid the dungeons always felt like oh I just want to be back in the overworld where it's safe you know so that was I was quite happy with that, but yeah. A classic 10 out of 10 game, no question. And again, 
can't imagine there's going to be any arguments or further comment needed for Breath no. of the Wild. Question. Uh, <laughs> yes. So with Elden Ring, and I think you know we've all kind of had this to an extent, is the the almost hangover you had when you finished that. You're like, oh, but but it's done. What do I do now? Hmm. And feeling that bit lost. Did you get that same feeling with Breath of the Wild when you finished it? Uh, I don't remember. Obviously, it's going back a few years now, but I don't remember feeling quite like that. I remember it. No, I think that's why it went to number one for me because I remember jumping into other games after it and feeling, oh, this isn't the same, or this isn't scratching the itch, or the quality mm. just isn't as good. And again, it's it's that food analogy. You know, once you've had something brilliant, it's very difficult to then recapture that. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I to be honest, I just don't remember <laughs> that feeling. Could well have. Um, Number three for me. Uh, I'm going to play this. I want you to guess. Okay, chime in when you know the answer. Right, Link to the past. Link to the past. There we go. I moved my phone away. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, The Legend of Zelda. Another Zelda game in my top three. Um, this is where I'm going more down the Dan route of nostalgia and uh, emotion and this game just i right to to be completely transparent i haven't ever i don't i've never finished this game okay i've got i don't even think i've got past i don't even know how far but like i've i've made it to the dark world and then always got stuck somewhere hmm. and because when i grew up i never obviously this was pre internet um and i never really knew about guides or anything i didn't have any friends that played this game so i was just on my own i was just stuck in this part that i couldn't get past dressed as a little rabbit thing so i, I, I literally i've got no idea where i'm supposed to go now or what i'm supposed to do but this game made me it's the first game that kind of took me away on like made me feel like i was going on an adventure prior to link to the past it was Video games just something that you do, you know, it's cool, you're jumping around, you know, you're playing a, some kind of uh, like a sports game of rudimentary American football, baseball, like playing a bit of pinball, playing Mario games, whatever. But this felt like, fucking hell, I'm in this world. And now we look back at it and it is, you know, pretty simple compared to the likes of Elden Ring, Breath of the mm. Wild. But then it was like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm the one doing this. I'm in this yeah. world, going on this adventure, finding all these cool little nooks and crannies. And it's just, again, magical, completely magical. And it does, it really holds up to this day as well. Graphically, uh, gameplay wise, it's, you know, it's what, a 30, 30 year old game now? Yeah, 30 years this year because it came out the year I was born. Well, there you go. Um, that's that's annoying. And uh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and yeah, I. It's just one of those games that I just love, and I really look. I've got a tattoo based on that game. You know, that's how much I love it, and uh, it's just something that I will. I really want to finish it to kind of say that I've experienced it. I can't imagine it's going to make me hate it. Oh, the ending was so disappointing. <laughs> Ganon kills you or whatever. It's a romance um, to not finishing it as well, I think, because just like stuff like that, it's you'll get to it at one point, but it's nice that you yeah. have and it still impacts you in that way. Well, it kind of reminds me of what it was like playing games as a kid. Like mm. I, I said it, I think I said it last week or the week before. I, I just didn't finish games. Yeah. Like I didn't even think about it. There was no pressure from anyone. So, oh, you haven't got to the end. Like I was, you know, nobody else played games that I knew. Mm -hmm. it was, there was none of that. Um, so it was like, yeah, this is just what you do. You just start a game from the beginning, get to the bit where you get stuck. And then when you find, feel like playing it again, you do that again. Yeah. Um, it's maybe why I like roguelikes. It's just <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what it is. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just, uh, again, I, again, like, I think it's a 10 out of 10. That's that. Any cool. further questions on the link to the past? No fight back. No. All right. Here is a very easy one. 
Here we go. Yeah, Alex, this one's for you. But which Donkey one? Kong Country. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was the the Game Boy version of the soundtrack, and that is the still to this day the definitive Tetris experience for me. Um, yeah, I, again, Alex very eloquently described it last week, but um, I just think it is just perfect. I can't think of anything I would change about that game from it's just like this distillation of just reward, like instant reward for doing something good that just is just like you a Pavlovian response. I just want to keep mm. oh, I just want to keep getting a line because every time I do it, it goes doo, 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 and, oh, this is amazing. And it's just so addictive and it's the first game that grabbed me like that. Like you get all these mobile games that kids are addicted to now this was the first one of those for me that was mm. like on a handheld device and i could just sit here playing this really simple game but just getting completely lost in that feeling that it gives you and that it's just that it's just that reward beating your high score really simple but just yeah i it, it's just it's perfect. It's, I can't. I can't really say any other game on this list is perfect, but this is. Yeah, it's all that it needs to be. It sets out what it's supposed to do, and it just fucking nails it. It's incredibly timeless, and the fact that it was just such an early game as well, and then it was nailed yeah. on, and that's the format now. You know, you can't can't yeah. fuck with it. Puzzle games, nothing. A puzzle game is probably the most objective type of game you can have where you can go like that's a better puzzle game than that puzzle game tetris just mm. is so popular with people it's hard to have seen it being dethroned in that area yeah we were talking about mobile games before like i think of all the mobile games and stuff that i've tried i've mm. put 15 20 hours into a smartphone version of tetris yeah right it's one of those things that you, you know you know if you're going to be sat around for five ten minutes that is it is the perfect thing for that situation yeah mm. Absolutely is. But I think specifically the Game Boy version, though, because like we said with Breath of the Wild, it's just that it's that Synonymous. perfect pairing yeah, of the yeah. form oh, factor absolutely. and the game itself is like that's there's your killer app. Yeah, and it was you know I got the Game Boy with Tetris bundled in, and it was like right, you could just have that game for the rest of your life and fifty billion AA batteries, and you'd be sorted, um, and a worm light and a. Screen something to make screen bigger. <laughs> all the gadgets. All the gadgets. All the gadgets. But other than that, that's, that's all you needed. Um, so, yeah, brilliant game. Uh, I can play it now. And when I play Tetris 99, that's the theme that I have on. Just, oh, it has to be. Just can't beat that music, that aesthetic. It's just. Oh, perfect. Um, moving on. My number five. Here we go. Okay. Very well. Very well. Oh, shit up. Shit up. Yeah, I um, I obviously love Super Mario World. It is uh, my, my first experience with it was we went to visit my my well my auntie, but my my cousin who's probably I don't know ten or fifteen years older than me. Hmm. So he was like a bloke when we, when we when we went to visit them. And he had, I, I had a Mega Drive and he had a Super Nintendo. That's the first time I'd seen a Super Nintendo, um, like in real life. And immediately I was like, right, I've got this, I've got, you don't want that Super Nintendo. I'm, I'm just a little kid. I've got this <laughs> Mega Drive. Like it's black, it's cool, it's got all these sports games on it. And I managed to sort of negotiate with him to swap. <laughs> To make a drive <laughs> for the Super Nintendo because these Super Nintendos nice. were like, they, I mean, they were like unheard of. I didn't know anyone that had one because obviously Mega Drive was massive, yeah, over here. Um, and Nintendo was always, it's always been, oh, that's a kid's console, blah blah blah. Um, but yeah, I think I had or he had Super Mario World, F Zero, and like Super R Type, his and, and game, all games that I love. And yeah. uh, I just, I saw Super Mario World and I was like, I have to, I have to have this. 
we are, we are not leaving this room until we've negotiated a swap. Because <laughs> um, I've been playing Sonic the Hedgehog for six months, and fuck me, is it shit. And um, <laughs> Super Mario World's just like another level completely. Because, you know, I love. Oh, no, it was. I loved uh, Super Mario 2, 3, and um, it's just like the sound, the, the visuals, all these extra colors that you got and the fidelity of it, it just it's just completely blew me away and then you play it and it's like wow this is just the smoothest platform experience even to this day like it's it's perfect perfectly weighted it makes any other platform you play feel a little bit oh this is a bit floaty or mm. oh the character feels a bit heavy this is like the gold standard that every every other platformer should feel like this is like just absolute platform imperfection and the exploration and the overworld finding all these extra little uh places you can go to extra levels extra exits it's got yoshi it's got a fantastic soundtrack and it's yeah it is just i mean you know i was raised on 2d platformers that was like the genre of the day and yeah this is just the perfect the perfect one no arguments again. I absolutely love this game, and it was in my top twenty. I think I put it in. Um, yeah, I think you did. Yeah. But in terms of like Mario games, definitely think it's the best Mario game for me, and just really fond memories of playing it. And I think my mum brought it home from a charity shop. It was just on a whim. She said, "Oh, you know this Mario game. You've already got All Stars, but I don't think you played this one." And I was like, yeah. "How have I played All Stars and all the games on that, and never played World? This where was where's this game been?" Because again, yeah. back in the day, no internet. Um, but no. like, just what you said, I can remember exactly the first part. I can remember going left instead of right on the map, going all the way up to the top of the hill, getting the yeah. eggs, and then all the different um, exclamation boxes squirting out of the top. Yeah. Whenever you build, all the different a- aspects to it were just like years ahead of any other game. I think that I played at that time, and it just made me play that game. I think I completed it end to end at least five or six times. It was incredible. Yeah. So great game. It actually got a bit of flack. Obviously, I was mm. joking about the Sonic thing, but I think it did get a bit of criticism when it came out because it was more of an evolution from Mario Three, whereas Sonic felt like this cool new, yeah, yeah. blast processing, really fast, really edgy. Um, <laughs> but I think it's obviously one is aged significantly better than the other. Yeah, like you oh, play yeah. Sonic now, you're like, oh, I've, I've I've run into a wall and suddenly it's not fun anymore. Like, yeah. Oh, I need, I need to walk now. This is shit. Like, yeah. Um, sorry, Sonic fans. Um, <laughs> you made your choice. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my top five. I think now they're probably pretty safe bets. I think you probably could have yeah. predicted most of them. <clears throat> so we'll get into the uh, the the more interesting stuff. But right, this one I think might be tricky to guess. So I won't I won't, I won't make it too close. If anyone gets this. What's that big thing over that hill there? Oh, I should probably go and kill that. What is it? It's Eco. Close. Very close. Shadow with a Colossus. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, I, I played this. It was one of the first games I played when I got the PS4 couple of years ago and uh, i don't know if you can remember i told this story on the podcast but i took the peer i was going to visit my parents for i don't know four or five days and thought right i'll take the ps4 with me and uh i will just take a game that i feel like i can finish during that space of time so like when, I, when, when my parents go to bed i'll just whack, whack a game in you know play that and um i thought this this game was about eight hours to finish. So okay, I can do that. Was it wasn't really expecting much. I knew it was one of the highest rated games on PS4, so I thought fine. Looks cool. <coughs> and um I absolutely just uh, well, initially I, I took the PS4, took Shadow of the Colossus, didn't take a controller, so I had to quickly go to Asda, get a third party <laughs> controller. And I've still got that shitty third party controller um to this day. For sentimental reasons, I haven't got the PS4 anymore. So I've got the controller. Anyway, um, so yeah, I I played it and 
I think part of the reason it's a fantastic game. I don't have you have any of you guys played it? No, no, no. no. I've always wanted it's, to. It is like one of those. And I think there is a bit of a, a theme here. Is one of those where it's like it takes an idea, like Tetris, it takes an idea, and it just does that. It's mm. very. It's no. There's no distraction. There's not really any, any like UI on the screen that I can think of. There's no HUD or no uh, DUI, like Mark said the other week. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just. It's just you, you're there. There's this massive world in front of you. And all you've got is this kind of vague idea of where you're supposed to go by holding up your sword and then the light reflected like tells you where to go. Hmm. And then when you get to where you need to go, there's just this giant monster there. And that's basically a puzzle that you have to work out, right, how the hell do I climb on top of that thing and inflict damage on it with this puny little sword. And that's that's basically it. Do that, repeat it 16 times, I think. 16 different colossi that you have to go out go back to the hub bit go out into the world find the next one which sounds like tedious Hmm. possibly or repetitive but it's just the same way mark was describing eco a couple of weeks ago it's just that you just feel like you're just part of this Hmm. world that is just mystical and there's nothing really to explain why you're there what you're supposed to be doing you just work it all out for yourself kind of like Elden Ring you can do that you can make your own adventure in that but this is just that there's nothing else to do has it uh, sorry mate I was going to say in terms of the remaster is it held up well (laughs) in your opinion as well it's gorgeous I never played it originally I've only played Mm. the remaster but it it was stunning like my mum is not interested in video games at all but she sat there and watched me play this game and i think that is probably where the emotional bit comes yeah, in yeah yeah because it's like wow this this was lovely to be able to do this as an adult and sit here with my mum and she's like oh oh what's that over there and you know go yeah. and go and stab him in the fucking head like you know, <laughs> like, you're doing it wrong give it here <laughs> give it here no, um, <laughs> she wouldn't she wouldn't say that um but yeah, it's it's just that that was lovely because she was genuinely interested in it, and I think it was one of those games where you know you can just watch someone play it, and it is quite it's quite chilled out most of the time. It's very calm, lovely music, and then you just get to this huge colossus, and then the puzzle solving comes in, and right, how can I possibly take this thing down? I'm just a tiny little kid, um, mm. but it's, yeah, it's brilliant, and just again that distillation of one core idea done extremely well is all it needs to be. And um, yeah, I absolutely love it. I'll add it onto my wish list. I think you've sold me on that. Yeah. I think it is on the, uh, what is it? The PlayStation, PlayStation Plus collection, collection thing? Thing, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, was very easy. Their, that was a big thing for them, wasn't it? Because it was Eco and then Shadow of the Colossus and then The Last Guardian is like the yeah. third in their masterwork almost. Yeah. That's why I'm excited just getting back to that PlayStation thing. I think Eco is on that, isn't it? In the, the I believe collection. so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. so. I'd like to go back to that and play The Last Guardian as well. There was a HD version of Eco as well on the <coughs> PS3, I think. So, yeah, I think it was. I remember yeah. seeing that. So it might, yeah. be, might be decent. Cool. cool. Um, so that's that. That's what we'll be at. Number six. Number seven. Alex, you should get this one instantly. Here we go. Ori and the Will of the Wisps? Yes, Dan. Take that, Alex. Sorry, I just, I was just enjoying fan. the music. Call yourself a fan. I set fan. you up for failure there, mate. Sorry oh. about that. Did. that um, moment where it hit Alex and his eyes rolled into the back of his head briefly. <laughs> 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 Who's under the desk? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, Lewis is on the wall, so it's not him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I... Again, it's that combination of doing everything gameplay-wise perfectly. So it's like the platforming of Super Mario World. You know, really perfect, tight, fast, zippy platforming. Feels great to play, but then it's just layered on this extra... The the, the secret source of it is like the look of it and the, the feeling that it evokes. Like, you heard that music there. It's just 
it feels like an emotional journey, which again is something you, I would never really associate with a 2D platformer, Metroidvania or otherwise. Like it just, I got completely wrapped up in this story that's barely, you know, barely spoken, but it's, you can feel the emotional weight of everything you're doing. You're trying mm. to, you know, solve this problem of this, this place and make everything better. And there's, there's just bits that are burned into my memory of just how they presented certain ideas and certain very sad things that happen in the yeah. game. Like, literally, uh, uh, there's not many games that I describe, but I could easily just, if I carry on talking about it, I would just tear up talking about it. And this is just, this is like, you know, we're talking about a game that's basically like a cartoon, but it's, mm. it's really, it really got me the, <laughs> the feeling that it just mm -hmm. tugs at your heartstrings constantly. Go on, Alex. It almost begs you to shed a tear. Like it, it's just like it's gonna you know, like I'm gonna get a tear out of you. I'm really going to do it. Like it, it's got that much emotion in it and that much feeling to it. And even it's 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 the the lighting and the presentation and just that little white light little white ray of hope almost. Um yeah. it just it does everything right. Yeah. And it, it, it no yeah you're right it knows what it's doing it's pairing that that emotional music with everything and it's um, yeah the visuals it's just like it's a heartbreaking game and I, I don't mm. often feel like playing stuff like that but um, I went back and played Blind Forest earlier this year uh, again really good game it's, does a similar pulls a similar trick of making you care. Um, which was really rare for me. So I think that's been a, a really recent thing to have a kind of emotional response to games. The uh, Alex, your lighting does that every week. That really freaks me yeah. out. Um, the Lewis face yeah, is gone. It, it, <laughs> 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 now it just pops up. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I I really think anyone like you, you should all play it if you haven't already and see it's it through just so rare for you to persevere with a game that starts with any sort of emotional beats or scary beats they tend to be your things where you're like i'm not carrying yeah. on I'm um out. yeah and it blind forest hasn't clicked with me and i've tried it a couple of times i tried it on the um i can't remember the name of the, the handheld thing i got for game pass on my she... phone thank you uh, it just hasn't really gelled with me, so I've kind of been put off playing Will of the Wisps for that reason. But obviously, got the collector's edition for that reason because I know yeah. it's that type of game where I need to play it. So many people love it, um, you guys, um, so so much. So yeah, I need to need to give it a go. I would recommend not playing it handheld. Okay. Play it, set aside some time in a dark room. Definitely start with Will of the Wisps, even though it's the second game. It is, it is a better game, and after that, it will give you the the impetus to maybe go back to Blind Forest okay. with a more sort of sympathetic eye. But I do think, yeah, it's one of those where you just want to shut everything out, have a dark room, and just get swept away mm. by it because it's just fucking fantastic. Cool. There it is. I'll rotate the PS5 out, play that game on the Xbox in the living room. Sold. Next one. Dan? I'm expecting you to guess this one. God of War. God of War. What a song. Yes. That is a hell of a song. Hell of a soundtrack. Hell of a game. And um, yeah, similar with Will of the Wisps. It just, I think this was the first game I can think of where I went, oh, I, I get what Dan means about stories being important. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Like, honestly, and it was genuine, like, mm. shit, I'm caring about these characters. Like, I've always been extremely dismissive of video game stories. Like, mm. they're all shit. They're all B-movie bollocks. Like, what's the point? I, you know, and I was even that way about The Last of Us. Like, I started that, and I was like, oh, this is rubbish. I wouldn't watch this on TV. Yeah. Um, maybe. You know, maybe I will when it comes out. But, uh, but God of War was very different, and I don't know if it's just because I can... <laughs> relate to the characters a bit more um not just because it's a grumpy bald man but, uh, <laughs> with an axe oh yeah, with an axe yeah um but yeah it was like i'm interested in like 
you know, va- vaguely interested. I'm not super nerdy about it, but like mythology and stuff. But it was, it's that dynamic between him and his son. And you can, you just, you just end up caring. And even there's that bit where Atreus turns into a bit of a bell end, and you're like, mm. stop being a bell end, mate. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it, and it felt like that. And it's not, it wasn't just playing a game. Yeah. Like, the gameplay was great. I very much enjoyed just chucking that axe around willy nilly. Amazing. And the puzzle solving, I thought, was quite cool as well. Mm. Graphically, again, I think this, that was the game that made me go, oh, I'm so glad I've got a PS4 now. Yeah. Like, I, I get that now as well. I get why you want <laughs> stories in your games. I get why you want fidelity because I am completely on board with this. This is just an incredible piece of art. Mm. You know, even down to the just it all being one shot. It's like right, this this is different. This isn't just you know, like we said uh, with you know when I was describing like my when I grew up, games were. Just something that you play they weren't really something that you really thought about or got invested in but this has been part of my my gamer evolution of making me feel like i can get caught up in a story to the point now where i'm playing stuff like 13 sentinels and that's mm. all that all that is is a story and I'm like i'm digging it so this this has been a pretty um important game for me as well personally but uh just an incredible one and I can't fault it at all. Yeah, I'm scared for the second. Same, same, yeah. f- same fears I've got for Breath of the Wild too, as well. Where I'm just like, it meant so much to all of us. I think those games when they came out, and I know I actually didn't necessarily have an affinity with either of those games, but for the zeitgeist, for everyone so invested in what those games were there to do and why they were so important to them, you know, mm. the game of the year that year was just ridiculous. Um, and the fact that, like I said, with God of War, it resonated so much, even for people that have got no kids, you know, or don't really have an affinity with, with the story it's trying to tell, or the mythology. It was perfect execution in sound, perfect yeah. ex- execution in graphics. The acting in it is just directed impeccably well, you know, to the point of it being like a triple A TV show. Um, mm-hmm. And then just all of the ad lib parts were perfect, just like things like The Witcher 3. You know, the stories in the boat all the way through to um, the different worlds that you could go. The difficulty in the the way that the mechanics worked in that game, you know, fighting the Valkyries and that was fucking impossible. Um, all the way through to the culmination of it and the revelations as well at the end. Even yeah. to the point where if you if you profited of just giving that game a little bit more time and went back to the house and had that ending, that mm. kind of then opened up what's going to happen in Ragnarok. Like it's just just quality all the way through, and yeah. yeah, it meant a lot to me at that point where it was part of the reason why Switch Island we were doing Switch Island. I was like, I'm playing God of War and I can't talk about it in a way mm. that I did in the end because I needed to, but I can't talk about it in a way that I'm getting FOMO for other people not playing it because they've got a Switch and they they didn't have that PlayStation. So yeah, I'm so yeah. happy that you you experienced it and we we bonded over and we bonded over it as well. Yeah, like a father and son. Uh, yeah, which one's which? Well, you're older. Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, have you played it, Tyler? I've tried twice, at least twice, uh, and get like an hour in, and I just, for some reason, fall off with it. Um, but, I don't know, I have a room set up that I don't have to share the TV in now, so I'm thinking it might be a good time to plug PS4 in and, and give it another go. Yeah. Is yeah. like this is a game that came out like a year after I became a dad, and I had I know so many people. I've read of so many people with all these stories of you know like I wasn't close with my dad. I called him for the first time in ten years after mm-hmm. playing this game. That's the effect it had on me. Wow. And and I want to experience that. You know, like mm-hmm. that's that's a big thing for me. I want to experience what makes this game so special to to you guys. To all these for all these stories that I've read, I want to understand that for myself because you know no game is that. No game means that much to so many people without being something special, and I do yeah. want to experience that. I want to, even if I have to force myself to play through it, I will do it. You sound like a. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You can be on more podcasts. I'm not going to like hold you to ransom for not playing this game. Don't worry. You're all, you're okay now. You're golden. You've got yeah. a microphone and a camera. That's all you needed. Yeah. Um, I You've think... even dressed up as me. That's... <laughs> I think just, that's been. Just... 
Go on, Alex, you go first. I was just going to say, just don't be too positive about PlayStation. <laughs> it's yeah. a really, really good uh, podcast where you can come on that. I was going to very, very quickly say as well, just bearing with the, the top tens as well, it's mm. like it's been so interesting to see which games have resonated in this way with people. Um, yeah. And I'm excited to hear what you've got left now on the top ten, because what number wow. was that? Seven? Uh, seven or eight? I think that was eight. Uh, that was eight. Wow. So we've got two left. Wow. So... Um, Tyler, you should get this. <laughs> Here we go. Come on. Here we go. Oh. Oh, yeah. Dragon Quest yeah. 11. Dragon Quest. Yes. Dragon Quest 11. To give it its full title, uh, set aside half an hour. Dragon Quest 11 S <laughs> Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition, specifically on the Nintendo Switch. Um, because... What, mate? <sighs> Yeah, don't get a bit more, bro. Load of shit. Um, so this, right, so to be completely honest, this is where my biggest struggles to decide what was going to make it into my top 10 game. Um, ultimately, while I've, why I've decided to include Dragon Quest Eleven is, obviously, it is a phenomenal JRPG. It is the best JRPG I've played. It is just easily... Um, one of my favorite long games, I would say. That, but it's the fact that it's it, it, to give it that kind of emotional resonance. It just m- gave me that kind of Saturday morning cartoon feel the whole time that I was playing it. Hmm. It just reminded me of those kind of watching those cartoons that were just about a group of friends that just went off on adventures and got into trouble and different scrapes and solved people's problems. Uh, and then it was all just r- lovely and colourful, and nothing really threatening ha- ever happened. Um, and that, just being able to play that, and have that same emotion that I had from you know being like a, you know, eight ten year old kid, was just, it just made me very very happy. <laughs> like playing <laughs> it, like uh, throughout, it was just beaming. And lo- you know, we could get into the technical aspects of, like I loved loved the battle system hmm. uh loved the presentation of it and everything but it, ultimately it's that feeling that it gave me of just pure silly joy hmm. the whole time up until where it got um you know it gets dark at a point and obviously as you said earlier dan that's normally the point where i get put off a game and lo and behold that's where i stopped uh playing dragon quest 11 um but then I decided to go back and even then just pushing through that if I in a silly kind of way it made me feel like closer to the game because it's like that's what the hero in the game has to do it's yeah. like, he has to get through this really shitty thing uh, I'm trying very hard to not spoil it but it's and, that, and that's just you know he was brave enough to get through it Surely I can. It's the, um, <laughs> so I'm not, um, not going to spoil Dragon Quest Eleven because I don't know how to spoil it because I haven't played it yet, but it's like the Final Fantasy Aerith scene. I don't really think I can spoil that for anyone, but obviously Aerith dies at that point, and it's like this character that you've invested a lot of time into just gets wiped out, and you're like, fuck, as a kid. Obviously, you haven't read it anywhere else, and this happens, and I was like, whoa, that's, that's groundbreaking. I found it really difficult to push past that point when I was younger. Because it hit right. me that hard, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Because JRPGs, like that whole point is, they are a time sink. Mm. So yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, that moment in Final Fantasy VII, Dan, like I, like I played that at like I was twenty six, twenty seven when I played that. It was quite recent, and yeah. I, I literally was up to the point where I fought Sephiroth as the final boss. I'm like. Yeah, it's fine. She's going to come back. It was all yeah, it was yeah. Some sort of bruise. <laughs> like, there's no way they're not just going to okay. they're not just going to kill off such an important character like that. There's all this love for in the community. Like, like what a quarter of the way through the game, they're not just going to kill her off, and that's it. It's good and that we, it hit me. Yeah. It was like, yeah. oh, it's good that we both agree that that is a better JRPG than Dragon Quest XI <laughs> as well. Uh, yeah, it, ben, it doesn't have wee of... blobby things. It doesn't have wee exactly. blobby. <laughs> it's got chickens. Um, it's. Uh... <laughs> But it's got uh, it's got a few of those kind of emotional gut punches that, um, again, maybe think, thinking about my uh, my gaming journey again, maybe that's pushing through that 
realizing I can actually play through, you know, miserable stuff as well and actually find some enjoyment. Maybe that's allowed me to to be more open-minded with stuff. But yeah, I, I just think it's a it's a thoroughly, thoroughly lovely game. And mm. I, I just love it. I just love it so much. I just, I just love it. It's so oh. lovable. I love Dragon Quest XI so much. Lovable is the right word for it, I think, as well. It's like that Saturday morning cartoon thing, because there's this... Mm. Like, I'd, I'd not heard of Dragon Quest in the same way. No. Um, and I think you guys talked about it. Was it a Game Club game at some point? Yes. And I'd, yeah. kind of, I'd seen a lot of hubbub about it, but it was on social media and stuff where you get people who are just massive fans who kind mm. of... They're, just almost, nerds. they're, yeah, they're just so nerds. biased about yeah. something that you're like, you know, that just doesn't project it. And then hearing you guys talk about it, and like I'd, I didn't even realize it was a Square Enix thing. You know, I thought mm. it was some almost like an Atlas level, different publisher, different thing. And it's, you know, I'd heard of Final Fantasy, but we'd all grown up hearing about Final Fantasy as people that play games, right? And I'd never heard of Dragon Quest. And it's like having played Eleven and looked into like the builder stuff, the earlier games, the remake that they're doing. It's, it's like the, it's the safe. It's the like if Square if, to, anal, to anal, analogize it to having kids, like Dragon Quest is the kid that grows up, does everything you expect them to do, does fine in school, goes off, gets a good job, settles down. Yeah. Final Fantasy is the kid that like goes off and you know joins a rock band at like yeah. sixteen and you don't see for ten years and comes back is just this like an addict, <laughs> yeah, <pretty much. laughs> a ruined addict. Yeah, so you look at like yeah, Cloud so true. A hero, and they're just two very different, yeah, two very yeah. different ways of getting to. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's it, comparing the two, especially because I played Final Fantasy VII so close to Dragon Quest, hmm. and the same company to do two things that are the same game fundamentally so differently. Hmm. Do you mean remake there when you're saying playing seven? No, no, I so, played yeah. seven, the original so, seven for the first time. So that original seven that would have been SquareSoft. Did SquareSoft yes. do Dragon Quest, yeah. or did they was NX that did Dragon Quest? I can never remember. Uh, yeah, it's always been always been always been SquareSoft. Been SquareSoft. Yeah. Such a weird, and again, it's that beautiful thing of what they've done with the JRPG is it kept it the fucking same as what it's been all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. As Final Fantasy did go off and make fifteen, like the the online games I can't really comment for really really popular massive multiplayer things that have made them a lot of money. Um, but 15 was such a shit show such a bad yeah, game you talk down on 15 Dan. that was a terrible game uh, awful I game. love 15 yeah, yeah for different reasons though it's not a JRPG at all no. it's an action RPG no, it's isn't not. it so it's if, not. yeah for a franchise to like veer off in that direction when it's been this all the way through it I was like that just doesn't make sense it's like um I don't know. I'm trying to think of a band that's brought out an album where they just completely. It's like where Paramore brought out a pop album, and you go, "Well, yeah, what? Why?" Yeah, well, brand, brand new is the one that comes to mind. Where they've yeah, done yeah. like four or five albums one way, and then they just went completely yeah, yeah, left yeah. field with it. Great example. Uh, it's almost like the opposite of um, Yakuza, and then going with like a dragon and turning it into turn based. Yeah, well, the, yeah. The joke for Yakuza is that the whole thing is your protagonist is a massive Dragon Quest fan. Yeah, so it's Dragon <laughs> yeah. his imagination, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just disappointing on Final Fantasy. But Dragon Quest, again, I think that's what jarred me a little bit. I was like, oh, fuck, this is the Final Fantasy game that I've wanted for a long time. I'm not in the right headspace yeah. to play this yet. I need to put it down. And like I said, that's why I've, I've picked it up on the home console because I want to sit there and play it on the PS5. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, go on. I was going to say, I'm going to play it now and expect the raccoons or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you'll get that feeling. <laughs> Yeah, Bert Raccoon, Cyril Snare popping out. Chippendale. Um, not a euphemism. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call it. Uh, <laughs> just a little pink, <laughs> little pink wrinkly thing. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so that was, my, that was my number nine. Number ten. I don't know who's going to get this. Someone's going to hmm. get it. Here we go. Hmm? Change of pace. This is. It's not the title thing. This is like from a level later on. But it's just a really lovely song. Oh, Any ideas? Any ideas? Like really it's new shows. Like I was gonna say I want to say something like Jet Set Radio or something like that. I was gonna say Sayonara World Hearts, like Alex did, but. 
No, yeah, I think I'd say you're probably the closest, Tyler, because it is a Sega game. It is Streets of Rage 2. 2, nice. Two. I was going to say 4, but I was like, it's definitely not 4. So no. the back you can, Although you can hear the similarities. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. The, the composition. Um, yeah, this, this was a tough one, because there's several vying for my number 10 spot. Uh, ultimately, I've just gone for... This is emotion. What I, I... I... This must be the game I've replayed the most out of mm. all games i've played it you know with by, by myself many many times i've played it with several different mates back in the day played it with my four-year-old last year we played we just sat down for a couple of hours and just played through the whole thing it's appropriate it's very cartoony violence um and <laughs> he loves violence it's, it's fine. fine uh and uh it's just so it's just such a cool again just perfection of an idea you're just a few do-gooders <laughs> just rolling around beating the crap out of criminals um to a banging soundtrack and this is probably the game that got me into video game music it's yeah. like it's so mm -hmm. synonymous with the game itself like i can't i can't disassociate the game from the amazing music like i it just it just felt cool to play like it, it controls amazing. I think I got into it, got into it probably around about the time, you know, fighting games are very popular. Playing a lot of Street Fighter Two, um, Final Fight, that sort of thing. But this was the one. Streets of Rage, I loved. The Streets of Rage Two was like, wow, this is. They've just absolutely fucking nailed it. Same way as Will of the Wisps did, following on from Ori and the Blind Forest, which was a great game. But then they just went everything just up a notch uh and yeah it's just incredible i've got so many happy memories of it every single level as soon as it starts and the music kicks in you're like right and nothing else in the world matters all that matters is i'm going to get to that chicken before you and therefore i'm going to get a higher score than you because you're going to die playing it in co-op dan me and you played streets of rage 4 to start to finish I just that sort of co-op experience um i just absolutely love that it reminds me of very innocent times and um the fact that it still holds up now still looks great as well played it on the mega drive collection yeah last year uh, really just even chris Scull chris scullion you know your man scully that was his desert island cartridges pick and he knows what he's talking about <laughs> Not, not that I feel like I need to call for backup in a Streets of Rage style, but um, <laughs> yeah, I just, I just think it's, it's, a, it's a very good game. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's why it's my number ten, and I assume you've all played it. Yeah, I have played it. Yeah, I was yeah. purposefully looking for an arcade machine, uh, you know, like a ROMed one where you can just basically get them all built into it. A while yeah. back, and there was a Streets of Rage. I think it was a Streets of Rage themed one. Where I had all the different parts of one, two, three, and four on it as well. Um, mm. So much so that I'm trying to find it in my bookmarks. But I'd like nine thousand games. Speaking of Chris Scullion, uh, he did a very good impression of the, the when you pick up a chicken noise uh, in the game. Come on, give it a I, go. I think something like <laughs> something like that. <laughs> there we go. But it's just uh, yeah, love it. I don't, again, I don't think you, it's, it's a very simple game, which is probably why I thought about not having it in my top 10. It's because ultimately it's just walking about beating stuff up. But I just think it's perfectly done for for that, for what it's trying to do. Similar theme to some of the other games on my list, Drew. I mean, it has a classic. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Good. Well, that's, that's my top 10. Um, let me just say what... What nearly made it uh, onto the top 10, and probably the closest to breaking into that top 10 was uh, Titanfall 2. I thought that might have been there. Yeah. Um, and I was going Dragon Quest 11, Streets of Rage 2, Titanfall 2. They have been rotating in and out <laughs> of this all week. Um, but ultimately, I think it just came down to Titanfall most of my memories of the Titanfall franchise are from Titanfall 1 playing that online and yeah. I got really 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 into that I didn't enjoy the online as much in Titanfall 2 I've, although the 
the single player campaign was got, fantastic. Got to pause a second because my Go pregnant miss is going to walk through because we think we can hear our cat outside. So just give me two seconds, you guys crack on. Sorry, Ben. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll carry on. Um, so yeah, there was that. There was, again, it was a toss-up between um, Super Mario World and... Oh, Dan's... Is that Dan's mic I can hear? Yeah, Mine's on just... mute. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Super Mario World or Super Mario Brothers 3. Alex, did you have Super Mario Brothers 3 in yours? I, can't I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. So it was, it was one of them. And I think ultimately it just came down to what I would prefer to play now, probably. And um, it, but it's very close. Like it, it, that, it could have been could have been either way and then a few others uh tomb raider just because i remember playing that for the first time and being completely wowed by it street fighter 2 wind waker slay the spire hades inside fire emblem three houses celeste and of course bubble bobble we can't ever forget bubble bobble exists and is a video game but that's um yeah pretty much my my lot i reckon what do you reckon, Alex? Very, very good list. Yeah? Happy yeah. with that? Tyler, any, any feedback? Yeah. No, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting middle ground between, like, you know, what we said about stuff being very, like, emotive for us and looking at something objectively and going, this is something that does a particular style of game or a particular mechanic or whatever just perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that list from top to bottom was number 10, Streets of Rage 2. Dragon Quest XI, God of War, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Shadow of the Colossus, Super Mario World, Tetris, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Elden Ring. Powerful Strong. list. Powerful yeah, list. Strong list, if I do say so. Yeah, that's got some weight behind it, that. Yeah. Oh, hi. Hefty. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, but that's it. That's it for Ben's 10. Stay tuned next week when we'll see the return of Lewis. Ooh. And he should, should we? I don't know. See him coming back. Who knows? Do we care? No, uh, it's fine. Yeah. Got Tyler now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if she lose, Lewis. Um, but yes, so stay tuned for that. And then after that, we'll be getting into deciding, doing like a full length episode where we decide on the definitive ones. And I think a few of mine should be in there, I'm pretty confident of. I think yeah. we've shared a few, haven't we? It's quite good. Yeah. Decent. Yeah, there's a lot of crossover so far. I think of one in particular that's that's featured very heavily. Absolutely. Yeah. I know. Cool. Cool, guys. I'm not going to do uh, India in a bottle because we've ran over slightly. Um, but what I will ask is, Tyler, where can we find you online, my friend? I don't have much for social media presence. I'm a little bit like Smark that way. Um, you find me at Twitter, at Tyler Bear. Nice. Or mainly in Discord with you guys. Yeah. Chatting absolute shit most of the time. It's great fun. <laughs> yeah. It is good fun. Alex? Um at ssalex984 on Twitter or as Tyler said in the Discord and just probably with Tyler here he is the reigning cross seasons champion which will be making a return very soon so Tyler will be setting the first challenge as the reigning champion Amen, Amen Ben, you're not a reigning champion but where can we find you online? Uh, You can find me at Benji Kong Wonderful. And you can find me at Dan Moore Tweets. Uh, if you like what we do, like we said before, you can go to patreon.com slash thecrossplayers, just like Tyler did, and support us from as little as £2. Uh, if you go to thecrossplayers.com, you can go over to our website, uh, and you can click on the Discord link and come and chat with us for free through there, uh, with caveats that Ben will probably try and haul you over to the Patreon anyway, because that's just what he does. Uh, and like I said, if you enjoy all of the stuff we do, uh, please don't forget to support us on social media and just give us a hi as well. It's nice to hear from you now and again. All lovely listeners. So, yeah. chaps, wonderful. Ben, fantastic list. Clicks all round, I think. Let's have a nice little, come on. Yeah. Oh, hey, Dan, baseball. good hosting. Clicks for that as well. Oh, come cheers, on. guys. Get to keep the Knock that going. rust off. Wonderful. Tyler, first uh, pop your cherry. Clicks for that. Oh. More clicks. And Alex. No, no clicks for you. No clicks for me. That's have, <laughs> have a wonderful day. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Intro. Yes, wait.